Saturday mornings in the 90s. If you grew up during that era in a particular part of the world, a likely staple in your routine that day was tuning in to watch popular American teen sitcom, Saved by the Bell. In 1989, a group of six pals from Bayside High changed the face of Saturday morning television. We were the first live action sitcom in the world for kids on Saturday morning. Our competition was Bugs Bunny. Bugs didn't stand a chance against these photogenic, pimple-free teens. During the early 90s, the Saved by the Bell cast members were the coolest kids in school. The series, created by Sam Bobrick for NBC, premiered on August 20th, 1989, and quickly became the flagship series in the network's TNBC lineup. TNBC, or Teen NBC, was the former American teen-oriented television programming block that aired on the network from 1992 to 2002. The block featured comical live-action series, primarily in the form of scripted sitcoms and variety series in a similar vein as Say by the Bell, such as California Dreams, Hang Time, One World, and City Guys, geared toward teenagers and sometimes young adults. Saved by the Bell actually started off as a completely different show with a completely different name. In the spring of 1987, then president of NBC, Brandon Tartikoff, asked executive producer Peter Engel to develop the pilot for a new series inspired by Tartikoff's sixth grade teacher named Miss Bliss. While Sandy Duncan was first considered for the role, the pilot episode for Good Morning Miss Bliss aired that summer, starring British actress Hayley Mills instead. Sandy would be fine though, since she'd go on to star on The Hogan Family, which was actually the conflict that prevented her from doing Say by the Bell. Fun fact, future teen stars Jonathan Brandis, Brian Austin Green, and Jaleel White also appeared in the Miss Bliss pilot. Unfortunately, before anything had even gotten off the ground, the network had already decided not to pick it up. Tartikoff didn't want to give up on the show, so he made a deal with the Disney Channel to air 13 episodes of the series. The show was then completely retooled, with Haley the sole remaining cast member from the pilot. The class was changed from the 6th grade to the 8th grade, and the kids became the main focal point. The results of the new and improved Good Morning Miss Bliss, which premiered in the fall of 1988 on the Disney Channel, still produced lackluster results, and was promptly cancelled. When Miss Bliss didn't make it in the ratings, Engel went back to the drawing board, hoping that the third time would be the charm. The series was retooled again, taking four cast members from the old show with it. Mark Paul Goslar, Dustin Diamond, Lark Voorhees, and Dennis Haskins. The rest were fired. Some other key changes made included dropping Miss Bliss, switching the school's location and age range from the fictional John F. Kennedy Jr. High in Indianapolis, Indiana, to fictional Bayside High School in Los Angeles, California, adding a fictional eatery the kids frequented called The Max, and filming before a live studio audience. Engel gave the whole rundown of how each character was cast in the show's 2002 E! True Hollywood story, as well as his 2016 memoir, I Was Saved by the Bell, Stories of Life, Love, and Dreams That Do Come True. His casting director happened to cross Mark Paul and was immediately struck by the teen's charisma, charm, and good looks. After a quick read-through, he was immediately given the role of Zachary Zach Morris. Zach was uh, the most popular boy in school, the king of the halls. He always has a scheme or a scam. Zach had to look you in the eye and lie right to your face, and you had to love him. A 14-year-old child model from Los Angeles clinched the role. Mark Paul Gosler came in. And he had that twinkle in his eye, and I looked at, I said to myself, if this kid can speak English, he's Zach. <laughs> Fun fact, the character was actually inspired by another high school smart aleck, Ferris Bueller. Even Zach's moments of breaking the fourth wall to speak to the audience were also directly inspired by Bueller. Once the role of Zach was squared away, next on the list needed to be his best friend, Samuel Screech Powers. Producers then cast Zach's eccentric sidekick. 11-year-old Dustin Diamond, a newcomer to acting, landed the role of Samuel Screech Powers. I got the name Screech because do you know what it sounds like when you screech, when you run your nail across a blackboard? The Screech, that was where Screech came from. That Screech can drive you nuts. Fun fact, Engel later found out that he'd misread his headshot and Dustin was much younger than the rest of the cast. He was 11 when he was cast, three years younger than everybody else. A fact that, had he been aware, might have prevented Engel from casting him. Lisa Turtle was originally written as the complete opposite of the actress who ultimately landed the role. 
Next, producers looked for a young actress to fill the designer shoes of Lisa Turtle. Lisa Turtle was a princess and was conceived as a Jewish white girl from Long Island. An unlikely candidate auditioned for the part, 13-year-old child model Lark Voorhees. She read Lisa Turtle and I said, that's her. And what do you mean that's her? They said she's black. I said, well, so is Lisa Turtle <laughs> as of now. And then Lark Voorhees was our, was our princess. Fun fact, Lisa got her name from a real girl Engel knew. The school principal, originally named Gerald Belding, was an older, humorless man and was played in the Miss Bliss pilot by Oliver Clark. After the show was retooled for Disney Channel, Mr. Belding became younger and had a much different sense of humor. His first name was changed to Richard and he was recast with Dennis Haskins. 31-year-old Dennis Haskins, who hailed from Chattanooga, caught wind of the new series. He jumped at the chance to read for the role of Principal Richard Belding. I called my manager at the time and she said, oh, they're looking for somebody black and over 50. I said, oh, well, seven auditions later, I got the job. Fun fact, Belding's name came from a pain in the butt editor Engel worked with at Universal Studios. For Kelly Kapowski, the love interest of both Zack and Slater, producers were able to narrow the field down to three actresses, Tiffany Amber Thiessen, Elizabeth Berkley, and Jenny Garth. Engel had originally met Tiffany in 1988 while casting for Miss Bliss and was impressed with how much her acting had improved. He really fought to have her on the show, knowing she was gonna be a major star. Engel and the other producers didn't want to lose Elizabeth though, as she was the strongest actress they had seen during casting. She originally auditioned for the role of Karen, a love interest of Zach's on Miss Bliss, but lost the role because she was so much taller than Mark Paul at the time. Engel believed that now that her height was more even with the rest of the cast, she could now fit right in. So after Elizabeth lost the part of Kelly to Tiffany, the role of strong feminist straight A student, Jesse Spano, was created just for her. In the summer of 1989, the search began for Kelly Kapowski, the cheerleader and homecoming queen. Producers narrowed the field down to three teenage finalists. We bring in Jenny Goff, Tiffany Amethyst, and Elizabeth Berkeley separately to read for Kelly. What well, came down to Elizabeth Berkeley and Tiffany. Half the room wanted Tiffany. Half the room wanted, wanted Elizabeth Berkeley. So Brandon said, why don't we use both of them? 15-year-old Thiessen won the role of Kelly. The Long Beach native was a teen model and former Miss Junior America. 16-year-old Berkeley, a dancer from Michigan, was cast as Jesse Spano. We had a notion of Jesse as a real brain and this sort of compulsive achiever perfectionist. The character of Albert Clifford, A.C. Slater, was inspired by Vinnie Barbarino, the character John Travolta made famous on the 70s sitcom Welcome Back, Cotter. He was originally conceived of as Italian-American. However, when all efforts to cast the character were unsuccessful, Engel asked that the part be opened up to other ethnicities. Mario Lopez, a dancer and drummer of Mexican descent from children's television series Kids Incorporated, auditioned and won the role. Adding spice to the mix was bad boy A.C. Slater. Slater was supposed to be kind of a John Travolta, Barbarini type from Welcome Back Hot Cotter. For a 14-year-old dancer named Mario Lopez, the audition was a slam dunk. When he walked in that room, I almost fainted. And he just had those dimples, you know, the, the girls went crazy. Fun fact, Mario wasn't initially thrilled about landing the role, admitting in his 2014 memoir that he was more interested in chasing girls at the time than auditioning for a role that had barely even been sketched out on paper yet. Slater was also named after a friend of Engel's son in kindergarten. Rounding out the new cast was real-life magician Ed Alonzo as Max, the owner of the gang's frequent cafe hangout, The Max. The role, however, would ultimately only last through the end of the first season. In a meeting with Engel, Tartikoff, and other writers and producers, the name Saved by the Bell was suggested for the title of the show. While Engel hated it, Tartikoff loved it. It stuck and filming commenced. The theme song was written by composer Scott Gale against the implicit instructions of Engel. Though Engel had not been able to keep the show from being named Saved by the Bell, he was determined to prevent the phrase from showing up in the theme. He gave explicit orders to his team of composers that he would not accept any theme that referenced the title, and the group agreed to leave out the phrase. Later, he listened to the first few composers, and though they followed his instructions, the songs were nothing special. Gale played his song next, and though he explicitly violated Engel's instructions, Engel couldn't help but admit it was the best and perfect for the show. By the time I got my books and I give myself a look, I'm at the corner just in time to 
Fun fact, the theme song was performed by actor, recording artist, and producer Michael Damien, best known for his role as Danny Romilotti on the soap opera The Young and the Restless. Now, after a lot of hard work in a relatively short period of time, Saved by the Bell was ready to go. The critics weren't kind. They came out in full force and mercilessly panned the show. They even took personal shots at the cast. Producers, however, were determined to keep things afloat. So, to engage viewers, the show addressed coming-of-age issues that every teenager faced. The valuable moral lesson soon became a trademark of the series. The love triangle between Zach Kelly and Slater also drove the weekly storylines. By mid-season, the formula had worked. Saved by the Bell had quieted the doubters and gained a huge teen following. As most of the cast was enjoying all the amazing and crazy experiences that their newfound stardom was providing, one person in particular was not. Dustin had a hard time fitting in with the rest of the teens. A lot of that was due to the fact that at the start, the others were teens and he wasn't. By the end of the first season in 1990, the show was a bona fide hit, ranking number one with the teen market. They were on the cover of every teen magazine and tons of merch like t-shirts, board games, dolls, and books. By the following year, the show was launched into syndication. After filming what was originally intended to be the final season of Saved by the Bell, NBC decided to order more episodes, but there was a slight problem. Tiffany and Elizabeth had already moved on and were absent, save for the series finale when they randomly end up present at graduation. But the stars didn't actually return. It was filmed before their deals were up. Engel revealed, We had already shot the graduation and that was supposed to be the end. We were supposed to end and not do another season. So we shot the graduation, but Tiffany had an offer to go with Aaron Spelling for not a 2 and 0, and Elizabeth wanted to do movies. So we didn't re-sign them because we couldn't re-sign them. Though producers knew they could not replace Kelly and Jesse, they also knew that they couldn't leave Lisa as the only girl on the show. Enter new character Tori Scott, played by Leanna Creel. Tori was a cool but pretty biker girl, who would also serve as an initial nemesis for Zack, and later love interest. Rather than develop a second new character, the producers decided to rely more on minor recurring characters. Fun fact, Tori was named after Tori Spelling, the daughter of iconic television and film producer Aaron Spelling. Tori, the real one, also had a guest role on Saved by the Bell as Screech's girlfriend, Violet Bickerstaff. Unsurprisingly, putting a bunch of teenagers together resulted in a whole lot of romance on the set. As Mark Paul told People in 2009, all of us dated at one point or another. It was incestuous. Sometimes the girls would gang up on the guys. Tiffany and Elizabeth would hate me, and then they'd hate Lark because Lark was talking to me, and Mario was supposed to side with someone. In Peter Engel's book, he revealed that Mark Paul and Tiffany hooked up after their characters had already broken up. When their tryst was over, Tiffany moved on to Mario. That relationship didn't last very long either, since she caught him cheating during a live taping. He was in his dressing room, making out with an extra, and Tiffany came in, catching him red-handed. She was wearing his letter jacket, and in a rage, ripped it off and threw it at him. After that, she ran out. Fun fact, the most serious relationship among the cast was Mark Paul and Lark, who dated for three years during the series' run. Being young, dumb, and full of... fun, Partying was also on the agenda. Tiffany has admitted the first time she sipped alcohol was with Mark Paul in Paris during a press tour. He also told ABC News he did the time-honored showbiz tradition of using his celebrity to get into adult clubs at the age of 16. He insisted that he never abused the power though, and that they really were a bunch of good kids. Like so many child stars, and let's be real, adult stars too, the cast of Say by the Bell got screwed by the deal they signed. At the time, no one suspected that the show would become a huge phenomenon. Being young and naive, the stars signed dodgy contracts, meaning they didn't make anywhere near as much money as you'd think. And just to twist the knife a little more, the cast doesn't make any money from the show's syndication nor from its merchandise. Mark Paul touched on the issue during a 2019 appearance on Watch What Happens Live. We made really bad deals. Poor deals back then. It is what it is. You move on, you learn. Saved by the Bell spawned two spin-off series, Saved by the Bell The College Years, which followed several of the characters to a post-secondary institution, and Saved by the Bell The New Class, that followed a new group of students at Bayside. The former only lasted one season, from 1993 to 1994. 
It featured Zack, Slater, and Screech from the original cast attending the fictional California University. Kelly later joined the cast after the pilot. Even though it was never as popular as the original series, the latter fared much better than the college years, lasting seven seasons from 1993 to 2000. Dennis reprised his role from the original series once again as their principal, Mr. Belding. Following the cancellation of the college years, Engel asked Dustin to reprise his role as Screech, who was returning to Bayside on a work-study program as Mr. Belding's administrative assistant. Saved by the Bell also spawned two TV movies, 1992's Saved by the Bell Hawaiian Style and 1994's Saved by the Bell Wedding in Las Vegas. The former movie followed the six teens from the show as they vacation in Hawaii with Kelly's grandfather, Harry Bannister. They soon discover Mr. Belding also happens to be there and they all get caught up in a plan to save Harry's resort from a greedy land developer. The College Years actually came about due to its success. The latter movie would pick up where the events of the final episode of The College Years left off. Now, here are some more fun facts about Saved by the Bell. Another potential name for the show was When the Bell Rings. Mark Paul is a natural brunette who had to bleach his hair blonde every season. Mario grew his hair long for the role because he wanted to look like Mel Gibson in Lethal Weapon. Elizabeth's hair also took a beating. It was constantly teased and an entire can of hairspray had to be used on her locks for each episode to achieve her voluminous curly do. Even though the episode Jessie's song where she gets hooked on caffeine pills and has a breakdown in Zack's arms as she sings the Pointer Sisters hit, I'm So Excited, is widely ridiculed as cheesy, melodramatic, and unintentionally funny, it was actually going to be a lot more serious. Jessie was originally going to be hooked on speed, but the network stepped in and told the producers to tone it down. Dustin's first kiss was with co-star Tori Spelling. While Dustin had a lot to say about Mario in his book, Mario had some stories of his own to tell about Dustin in his memoir. Mario recalls Dustin leaving Polaroids of his genitals all over the set for anyone to discover. Peter Engel wanted the set of the show to be kept as clean and PG as possible. The cast were told to maintain good behavior and a no swearing rule was implemented. Apparently, the motivation behind this was the result of Engel's past as a drug addict. Thankfully, he'd gotten clean and found God 10 years before the show aired. Monday through Friday, I would wake up and smoke two joints, pop speed to get through work, snort a gram of cocaine, and take a handful of quaaludes to fall asleep. Lionsgate Home Entertainment has released all four seasons of Saved by the Bell on DVD in North America. However, the episodes on these and all subsequent releases are the edited versions, as used in syndication, with scenes cut for time. They also released the two feature-length TV movies on DVD in 2007. Between 2012 and 2013, Lionsgate released a complete series set in Canada and the US. After the end of Saved by the Bell, many of the cast members were able to move on to do other great things. Dennis finally graduated college in 2015 at the age of 65, earning a Bachelor of Arts in Theatre from the University of Tennessee at Chattanooga. Mark Paul has starred in many television shows, including NYPD Blue, Franklin and Bash, and Mixed Dish. Mario went on to do a bit of everything, TV, films, and Broadway. He's found steady success as a host of reality-based programming like The X Factor, Extra, and Access Hollywood. Tiffany's done some film, but mostly TV work, with her standout role being Valerie Malone on Beverly Hills 90210 for several seasons. She even hosted her own cooking series on the cooking channel called Dinner at Tiffany's, in which she prepared the meal with a different group of celebrity friends each episode. Some people, though, really struggled, professionally and personally. Lark had a hard time maintaining her momentum in the business, and as a result, her acting resume has gone blank for years at a time. In 2020, she revealed on The Dr. Oz Show that she has schizoaffective disorder, a mental health condition which is marked by a combination of schizophrenia symptoms as well as mood disorder symptoms. While Elizabeth's career is still active, she suffered one of the most embarrassing big screen lead role debuts in history, with the notorious flop 1995's erotic drama thriller film, Showgirls. As for Dustin, well, life wasn't kind to him at all after the show ended. He released an X-rated tape, something he calls his greatest regret, went to jail for several months, and violated the terms of his probation, leading to another arrest. Most famously, in 2009, he published an inside story of the show's cast and crew from his point of view, titled Behind the Bell. The book paints an unflattering portrait of many of his colleagues 
and their alleged backstage behavior. Its accuracy was forcefully disputed by his former castmates. Dustin later disclaimed responsibility for much of the book's content, blaming his ghostwriter for fabricating salacious stories. Some stories in the book include a claim that when Tiffany's boyfriend Eddie Garcia guest starred on the show as movie star Johnny Dakota during the anti-drug episode No Hope With Dope, she was simultaneously hooking up with both Mario and Mark Paul. Allegedly, after going from one dressing room to another, right under his nose, Eddie eventually found out and broke up with her when the show wrapped that same week. Dustin wrote that Mark Paul took steroids while filming. While Mark Paul did bulk up a bit as the show progressed, there's been no evidence to corroborate Dustin's claim that it was due to drugs instead of Mark Paul just naturally growing up. About himself, Dustin said that he was intimate with 2,000 women, one of them being NBC's vice president of children's programming, Linda Mancuso, who was 18 years his senior. One claim that was found to have some corroboration backing it was the one about Mario date raping a woman. The LA Times reported that police were investigating an 18-year-old's claim that she was raped by 19-year-old Mario while at his house. After that news became public knowledge, another woman also came forward to say that he'd done the same thing to her two years prior. Prosecutors ended up dropping the charges due to a lack of evidence to support either allegation. Dustin claimed in his book that NBC's lawyers got involved and paid the woman around $50,000 to keep quiet. Due to the tell-all, when the cast of Say by the Bell reunited for a photo shoot with People that same year, Dustin was not invited. His image was also edited out of the 1989 cast photo that was used on the cover and set to show how the cast looked 20 years later. Dennis admitted after some time that he was upset about not getting a call to join the reunion. Dustin's book would also apparently serve as partial source material for Lifetime's The Unauthorized Say by the Bell story, which the other cast members disapproved. In 2015, the cast appeared on a skit on The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon while episodes of the program were taped in LA. Mark Paul, Mario, Elizabeth, Tiffany, and Dennis all participated. Lark and Dustin did not. While Lark's publicist said her intense work schedule prohibited her from participating, Dustin's attorney told E! News he had prior commitments. Just months before the reunion, Dustin had pleaded not guilty to stabbing a man in December 2014. He would later serve a four-month sentence after a jury found him guilty of carrying a concealed weapon. However, he was arrested weeks after his release for violating his probation. Dustin passed away in 2021 after a battle with lung cancer. He was 44 years old. In 2020, the Saved by the Bell reboot debuted on Peacock. Over its two-season run, almost all the core cast members would make appearances, except Dustin and Dennis. <laughs>